Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. Before we kick off today's episode, I'd like to thank everybody for all the support on the first couple of episodes because it seems like you guys are really enjoying them. I think I've gotten like 600 subscribers within the past week, which is by far the most amount of subs I've gotten within a one-week span. So I really thank everyone, whether you're a new viewer or an old viewer, for enjoying the series thus far because I have had a blast with it as well. So we're going to get through pretty much the rest of April today. We are currently 4-6 and six on the season. Overall, we can't really jump to many conclusions because we're only 10 games in, but overall, the offense has been pretty subpar, minus Jose Ramirez, who has been an absolute beast so far. And the pitching, for the most part, has been pretty solid. All of the starters are doing pretty well outside of Zach Plesak. Tristan McKenzie, I think, is doing better than his numbers suggest. The bullpen is a little bit shaky, but again, we're only 10 games in, so it's really not that big of a deal. Today, we are going to make our very first trade of the series, and I didn't want to make like a gigantic trade. I didn't want to shuffle things up in a major way this early, but I also wanted to make a move and acquire some more prospects who I really like. So, First base is a position I think we could really use some depth at. I like Josh Naylor and Bobby Bradley for the future, but we don't really have a lot of guys in the farm system. So we're going to go through the player finder here looking for young guys with at least B potential. Obviously, you have like Guerrero and Torkelson. We're not going to trade for them because that wouldn't be realistic. But a name I stumbled across is Dustin Harris of the Texas Rangers organization. He's a lefty bat, 22 years old, 66 overall with B potential. He just looks like a really well-rounded player. And with the Rangers already having Nathaniel Lowe, who develops very well in MLB The Show simulation, I don't really think Dustin Harris is a spot for them going forward. So we would agree to a five-player trade here with the Rangers. We're going to be sending away three prospects, the first of which is corner outfielder Micah Price. He's a 70 overall with deep potential. The Rangers do need some corner outfield depth, so I figured he would make a lot of sense. Starting pitcher Sam Henches was a player who I really didn't want to give up. He has good hits per nine, good walks per nine, which are probably the most important two stats for pitchers in this game. And I think he actually has quite a bit of upside. I know the C potential doesn't really show it, but he has a high velocity rating, a high break rating. I think he has the physical makeup to be a good pitcher. And it was unfortunate that we had to trade him away. Juan Moza, as well, a 21-year-old closer, is also in the deal. So those three players are headed to Texas for Harris, along with an outfield prospect in Julio Pablo Martinez. He's a 26-year-old center fielder. So this would be the trade, and the deal is done. So our very first trade of the series is complete. I know it's not one that's going to affect the Major League team in the short term, but I really like what Dustin Harris can bring to the table as someone who can hit for power, hit for contact, good defense. He's actually pretty fast. And then Julio Pablo Martinez was a player who I'm actually pretty excited about getting as well. He was once a really highly regarded prospect at one point. It just hasn't really panned out. But I think a career restart here in Cleveland could do him pretty well. And with us not having a ton of outfield depth in our farm system, he'll be able to have a big role on the AAA team. So at the end of the last episode, I asked everybody which teams they wanted to see us play against. As you all know, I usually do two games per episode. And it seemed like the most popular choices were the White Sox, the Yankees, and the Angels. So I had to figure out which two I would want to do today. And I figured since we played two home games in the last episode, both of which were against teams in our division, I would do one of the Yankee games and one of the Angel games, both of which are on the road. I promise we're going to be able to play against the White Sox plenty. I'll make sure to get them uh, early this season, so we will get to face off against them pretty soon, but not today. So we're going to simulate nine games here. Two against the Reds, three against the Giants, and four against Chicago. During our sim, starting catcher Austin Hedges broke his shin, so he's going to be out a month or two, which is a pretty big deal. Luke Maley will become the main starting catcher, and Brian Lavastida will be called up from AAA to become the backup catcher. We would get another injury here. Richie Palacios, one of our middle infield prospects, tore a finger ligament. He's going to go on the 60-day injured list. That's certainly unfortunate. So we ended up doing pretty well in those nine games that we just went through as we go 6-3. and three. But I noticed some very interesting trends in these games. So we allowed 10 runs in one game to the Giants. We allowed 6 and another to White Sox. Both of those games were started by Cal Quantrill. In the 7 games that Quantrill did not pitch for us, the most amount of runs we allowed was 2. But on the flip side, in the 9 games that we just simulated, our offense never scored more than 4. 
So pretty much, the offense is having a really hard time of driving in runs. We're currently tied for 21st in the majors in that category. But on the flip side, the pitching is doing a fantastic job of not allowing runs to come in as we're currently tied for 9th. So we currently have a bottom 10 offense and a top 10 pitching staff, which going into the season was kind of expected. We knew our pitching staff was going to be a strength, but I didn't know it would be this extreme. We're going to simulate to the final game of the Yankees series. I wanted to pitch with Aaron Savale today because he's gotten off to a really good start to the year. We ended up splitting the first two games, and both of them broke away from the trends of not a lot of offense. We scored seven in the first game. We allowed eight in the second game, which was pitched by Shane Bieber, who's had a pretty underwhelming start to the season. So we're going to hop into this third and final game of the series in New York at Yankee Stadium. Series is currently tied at one, so both teams are looking to break the split and determine a winner. It's a very gloomy day here in New York. The forecast predicts heavy rain, but the game must go on. We shall play ball. Let's take a look at both lineups. The Guardians are doing something a little bit different here with Brian Lavastida getting his first major league start. It's not his debut. He has gotten two at-bats this season, but he has not started in a game yet. Jamison Tyone is starting here for the Yankees. He's gotten off to a great start this season. 3-0, 2.39 ERA in four starts. We'll see if he can keep it going today against a measly Cleveland lineup. Miles Straw opens up the game, leading us off with a single into right field. So already the Guardians have an early man aboard. That's a pretty good start. That'll bring up Josh Naylor, who counts it right to short. The Yankees going to look to turn a double play. They cannot. Torres way over fires for Rizzo. So Naylor is safe. He gets to advance to scoring position. Will that error be a mistake? Sure will. As Fran Mel Reyes hits a two-run homer with a bat flip as well. A beautiful swing there for Reyes. His second home run of the season. And keep in mind, that was with two outs. So if the Yankees had turned the double play earlier... Reyes never gets to hit in this inning, and the Guardians never get to score. So, major props to Cleveland there for capitalizing off of the poor defense by the Yankees. And the Guardians are up early in this one. Aaron Savale starting for Cleveland. He has a 2.25 ERA and four starts. Pitching some good ball as he gets the curveball to get Glaber Torres there. Already a rough start for Torres with the error. Now that'll sign up Joey Gallo here. Bottom two. Gallo with a rocket in a right field, and that one is gone. That ball barely went in the air. It looked like a line drive, but a home run nonetheless for Gallo, his sixth home run of the season. And the Yankees are on the board as it's now 2-1. to one. We move into the third inning now. Miles Straw up. He's already reached base today, looking to do so again, and he will. His second base hit of the afternoon, a single into center field so the Guardians again have a runner aboard here for Jose Ramirez who's been hitting the ball at an MVP type level but he goes down looking there on the fastball nice pitch from Tyon who's been pitching well since the first inning two solid frames from Tyon and we move to the bottom of the third Glaber Torres draws a walk so the Yankees get themselves a base runner after a hot start Savale is sort of starting to slow down hopefully he can pitch a little bit better as that'll bring up Giancarlo Stanton who goes down on the cutter Nice pitch by Savale. His pitch count is creeping up, though. It's already at about 60. Top of the fourth inning now. Here's Reyes, who homered off the error. Speaking of errors, that ball is bobbled at short by Oswaldo Cabrera. And because of that, Reyes is safe at first. The second error of the ball game from the middle infield of this Yankees team. Will this one bite them in the butt just like the last one? And it looks like it might. Andres Jimenez will get a double into left field. That one wasn't hit very hard, but hey, a double's a double. Reyes has to hold up at third, but now Cleveland is 200 in scoring position, two outs. A huge opportunity for Mercado, and he's going to pop this one up. Should be easily caught by the catcher, and it is. So Cleveland got a couple runners in scoring position, but they weren't able to do anything with them, and so the score will remain 2-1 to one in favor of the Guardians. Josh Donaldson leads off the bottom of the fourth, the bringer of rain. Literally, because it's raining, and now Josh Donaldson sends that one over the fence, and we are tied at two. Donaldson with his fourth home run of the season. The weatherman predicted heavy rain, literally, because that's his nickname, and it's raining really hard. Josh Naylor is up here in the fifth with two away. Gets that one over the glove of Torres for what looks like it should have been a single, but he's actually going to head for second and is out. 
I think Naylor thought Aaron Judge was going to make a bad cut on the ball, and Judge actually made a perfect angle, so that's how he was able to get Naylor out so easily. And we move to the bottom of the fifth. Glaber Torres is up. He's going to ground this one softly to Jimenez. He gets the out at first. One, two, three inning for Zavale, and that'll end his day. Five innings, two earned runs, both off the of solo home runs. Not a bad performance by Savale. We'll see if the lineup, however, can get anything going as they have been held scoreless since the first inning, and that's not going to help. Ramirez gets fooled by the knuckle curve. He's over three today. Not a great performance from J-Ram. So one away, that'll bring up Fran Mil Reyes, the only guardian to drive in any run so far today with the two-run homer back in the first inning. This one also looks like it has a chance to go out, and it does. A solo home run for Reyes, who going into this game only had one home run all season. Now today, he has two, making it three on the year, and the Guardians are up by one. That'll bring up Bobby Bradley with a moonshot in the right. This one will go into the second deck. The Guardians go back to back, and now leave this game by two. Great hitting here from Reyes, and now Bradley, his fourth of the year, and that 429-foot nuclear missile will nuke Jamison Tyone out of the game. Michael Kane will enter in his place. He's had a pretty good season out of the pen with a sub-3 ERA. And he would get through the inning fairly easily as with two away, Jimenez will fly this one out into center. Caught by Joey Gallo. Good inning, though, as the Guardians scored two off of homers by Reyes and Bradley. So as we go into the bottom of the sixth inning... We've got a little bit of a twist here. The rain is a little bit too much, and they're going to call a rain delay for about 45 minutes. So we're going to go in the time capsule, fast forward 45 minutes into the future. Cleveland was already going to make a pitching substitution anyway, so the timing was actually kind of convenient of the rain delay, as Nick Sandlin will enter for the Guardians. Two away runner on first for Rizzo. This one is hit barely fair, but it's not going to matter Is Josh Naylor is able to come down with it anyway. One, two, three, any there for Sandlin. You may be able to notice the rain isn't coming down really at all. The sky is still dark, but there's no precipitation currently. Jonathan Loisega is in for New York now in the seventh. He has an ERA hovering around 11. Really not doing all that well. Here's Daniel Johnson. It is a pinch hitter for the catcher, La Vestida, and he gets plunked. So Johnson heads to first with a stare down with Loisega. Now Johnson's on second here for Naylor. Should have let that pitch go. Would have been a walk, but instead it's a ground out to third. A costly mistake there by Naylor, and so the Guardians are still only ahead by two. Brian Shaw, the veteran, enters here in the bottom of the seventh. He has not pitched all that well this season. 7.71 ERA in two and a thirds inning, so it is a small sample size as he gets Gallo to go down on the curveball. Jelly Gallo swinging from the fences there per usual. And now we move to the eighth. Zach Britton is in for New York. He is also not having a great season with his ERA in the sevens. Jose Ramirez leads things off. Does not have a hit yet in this ball game, but he's going to change that here with a single in the right center field. So with nobody out, the Guardians get another runner aboard as they look to possibly extend their lead. But I'll bring up Fran Mel Reyes. He has two home runs today, looking at a third maybe. Not going to happen. As there's a grounder to Cabrera. Gets the out in second. Can they turn two? They do. Great defense there by the Yankees. They turn the 6-4-3 double play. And it certainly is good for the shortstop and second baseman, Cabrera and Torres, because they both had errors earlier in the game. James Karinchak is in here in the bottom of the eighth for the Guardians on the mound. 6.23 ERA in four and a thirds innings. Not doing all that well. And his day starts off pretty rough as DJ LeMahieu, the designated hitter, will single into right field. So already the Yankees open up the inning with an early base runner. Labor Torres then draws a walk. So the first two batters are aboard. The meat and potatoes of the lineup is due up. That's not good news. Giancarlo Stanton goes down on the knuckle curve. Huge strikeout for Karen Track. He needed that one badly. That'll bring up Aaron Judge, who also goes down on the knuckle curve. Another huge strikeout for Karen Track, and now all he needs is one more. It's Donaldson again! The knuckle curve retires the final three batters. Great work there by Karen Check to get out of the jam. He is fired up, going back to the dugout, and the Guardians remain up by two. Chad Green, the veteran, enters here in the ninth inning for New York. Two away here from pinch hitter Bradley Zimmer. He's had a pretty rough start with a sub-100 batting average. He's going to fly this one into shallow center. It will be caught. 
So the Yankees get out of the inning with no trouble. They're down by two, entering the bottom of the ninth. We'll see if Rizzo, Gallo, or Cabrera can keep them alive as we turn this one into the arm of our closer, Emmanuel Classe. Currently four for five on save opportunities as he strikes out Rizzo on that nasty 98 mile an hour cutter. That pitch is filthy. That'll bring up Gallo who lines it to first. Nice play by Bradley from a second out of the inning. And now this game comes down to the shortstop. As well though, Cabrera who grounds it to short. Yu Chang fields it. What a play by Bradley. It was actually overthrown. Bradley had to jump, catch it, and keep his foot on the bag, which he does. And the Guardians win the game and the series as they finish this one off 4-2. to two. Great win there for our Cleveland Guardians as we're now 12-10. and 10. We're going to see to the final game of this Angel series. The reasoning, the pitching matchup. Shohei Otani versus Shane Bieber. It's too perfect, right? So we would end up losing the first game, winning the second game, and losing the third one. So we're currently down 2-1 in the series, looking to split it here with our ace facing off against their ace. We won't get to see Shohei Otani hit today since he'll be on the mound. But I figured we would rather see him pitch than hit because when he pitches, the game is a little bit more about him. And obviously, we want to see Shohei Otani because it's always showtime in sunny Los Angeles. The Guardians looking to tie this series up against a great Los Angeles Angels team who's gotten off to a fantastic start on the season. Otani and Bieber, two of the best pitchers in the American League, warming up in their respective bullpens as we look at both lineups. Ahmed Rosario getting a day off, so Yu Chang will start at shortstop today. So here's Shohei Otani, 3-0 in 5 starts, 2.94 ERA, 1.01 whip. He's also having a great season at the plate, so another phenomenal two-way season so far for the wonder kid, Shohei Otani. Jose Ramirez is up with two away. This one is at high and pretty deep in the center field. Trout chasing after it at the warning track, but it is caught. Pretty remarkable that the Angels have arguably the two best players in baseball with Otani and Trout on the same team. Obviously, we have to worry about Otani on the mound today and then Trout at the plate as he will face off against Shane Bieber, the ace of our staff, who's been okay so far. He has an ERA in the fours. His whip is pretty low, which is good, so I think he's pitching better than his ERA suggests. Austin Romine, the veteran catcher, hits a single into center field. Maybe not the player you would expect to be hitting number two in a lineup, particularly for a team this good, but hey, Credit to Romine. He's still making do here in his major league career. Jared Walsh flies this one into right, caught by Naylor. So a good inning there for Shane Bieber. No early damage from either offense as we move to the second. Two away here for Miles Straw. He gets plunked on the shoulder. Straw gives Shohei the stare down as he walks to first. That brings up Andres Jimenez with a nice opportunity to drive in a run. He strikes out on the fastball. Good work there by Shohei Otani to get out of the inning. We move to the bottom of the second. Anthony Rendon leads things off, and Rendon hits this one. Nice lane of a right center gap for extra bases. Straw sprinting after it. He's not going to be able to get it in time before Rendon makes it to second. So it's a no-out double, and the Angels, now the runner in scoring position, and a perfect opportunity to be the first ones to score today. However, they're having some trouble driving in this run, but with two away, it looks like Taylor Ward might be able to. Rendon headed home. Straw not even getting rid of it. He pump fakes it and then throws it to Jimenez, who was covering first for some reason. Just a weird play there, but nevertheless, run scores. 1-0. Tyler Wade goes down looking. Good strike out there by Bieber, but not a bad inning for the Angels as they do score. And we move to the third. Yu Chang leads this one off for Cleveland. He started the year off slow, but is really starting to play well. As this one is hit high and deep, it goes in front of a wall for what looks like a double. So with nobody out, the Guardians now have a runner in scoring position. Big hit there by Yu Chang. And with two away, that'll bring up Josh Naylor looking to drive them in. Naylor with a swing and a drive in a deep right field. This one looks like it might be out of here. And the Guardians take the lead. Josh Naylor with his first home run of the season. It took a little while for him to regain that power back. But he's finally gotten over the hump with the homer. And Cleveland is up top for the first time today. A great swing there for Naylor. And the Guardians now lead 2-1. That'll bring up Jose Ramirez who strikes out on the splitter. So Shohei Otani immediately does something cool after allowing the home run. Bottom three, here is Mike Trout. Two away, 1-2. Swinging a miss on the changeup. 
Great pitch there by Bieber, who's looking pretty good through three innings against this talented Los Angeles lineup, and we move to the fourth. Fran Mel Reyes with a swing and a miss. That fastball going right down the middle, nearly 100 miles an hour on the radar gun. Bottom four now, two away, still 2-1 for Justin Upton. Is this one is it high and deep in the left? Mercado chasing after it, and it's gone. Mercado unable to get to it quick enough. A solo home run for the veteran Justin Upton, his eighth of the year. Upton's having a career renaissance this season, and the Angels tie it up at two. Now we go to the following batter, Max Stassi. He goes down looking on the fastball. So right after allowing the home run, Shane Bieber does something cool, and we are tied at two through the fourth. Into the fifth inning, two away here for Oscar Mercado. Hasn't done a whole lot today, 0 for 2. It can 0 for 3 as he strikes out on the slider. Good in there for Shohei Otani, and we move to the bottom of the fifth. One away here for Tyler Wade, the 2-2 pitch from Bieber. He goes down on the fastball. Nice pitch from Bieber through five. The game is tied at two. Both starters still in as Josh Naylor leads off the sixth. Naylor with a line drive deep in a right field, and that baby's out of here. In Josh Naylor's first 25 games of the season, he did not homer once. Today, he has gone deep twice. Interesting fun fact here. In the first four games that I've actually played in this series, we've had somebody get a multi-home run game in every single one. Last episode in the two games we played, Jose Ramirez did it twice. Today, Fran Mel Reyes against the Yankees. Josh Naylor today. That's pretty wild. Otani is yanked out of the game for Aimee Barria, looking to keep things afloat here for Los Angeles. As with two away, here's Bobby Bradley. Hits that one off the wall. Out in right field. Bradley's going to like this one into a double. So the Guardians have a runner in scoring position. A nice opportunity here for Miles Straw. 3-1 pitch. Lines this one into center. That'll drop for a hit. Bradley thought about going home, but is going to stay at third. Interesting decision. We'll see if that backfires. I don't know if he would have been out or not. It was a pretty good throw by Trout. That'll bring up Jimenez. Swinging this on the changeup. He got caught chasing the low pitch. Can't do that with two runners aboard. So the Guardians score won that inning, but it feels like they could have done more. And then right as we start at the bottom of the sixth, Mike Trout answers for the Angels in a big way as he hits a solo home run into the left center gap. And Trout has his game tied up at three with his seventh home run of the season. And from there, Shane Bieber is going to be taken out of the game. And Trevor Steffen, who's had a pretty good season, 3.86 ERA in 14 innings, will come in to replace him. Both Otani and Bieber, I feel like, pitched pretty well today, but they both allowed a few too many home runs. Nice strikeout there for Stefan, making early work of the Angel lineup, and we move to the seventh, game tied at three. This has been an exciting matchup. Mike Myers is in for Los Angeles. He's an ERA of six and nine innings so far. Bradley Zimmer in his a pinch hitter, strikes out on the four-seam fastball. Zimmer continuing what has been a very frustrating start to the season, and we move to the bottom half of the inning. Upton hits that one over the glove of Jose Ramirez for a base hit. Trevor Steffen is still in. I think the Guardians are going to try to have him go this full seventh inning as well as he strikes out Stassi on the slider. Good pitch there by Steffen. That'll bring Tyler Wade up with two outs. Wade hits this one high and deep in a right field, and that one is a homer. So the decision to keep Steffen in a little bit too long ends up backfiring, and Los Angeles is back on top 5-3. to three. I know that home run went off the wall, but as you'll see here, the ball hit the wall above the yellow line. That's where the home run signal is, so by law, it is a home run, and the Angels are now up by two. James Karinczak is in to try to pad the bleeding as he faces off against Fletcher, who goes down on that vaunted knuckle curve, which of course killed the Yankees in the first game we played today. We move to the eighth inning. The Guardians have some damage control to do, down by two. Ryan Tapera, the veteran, is in for Los Angeles. He's only allowed one run in six innings so far as he faces off against Josh Naylor, who is homered in his last two at bats. Goes down looking on the outside slider. That's a nice pitch. I'm not going to lie. Good work there by Tapera. We move to the bottom of the eighth. Austin Romine leads off the inning, drawing a walk. So the Angels get themselves an early base runner. That'll bring up Mike Trout, 3-2. He also draws a walk. So James Karinczak is starting to struggle, and with that... Uh, Cleveland would take him out of the game for Anthony Ghost. That'll bring up Jared Walsh, and he grounds into a double play. Great defense there by the Guardians. It's a 3-6-1.
Double play. You don't see that combination overly often. And then Rendon goes down on the slider. That was pretty easy for Anthony Ghost. He faced off against two batters and got three outs. Not too shabby. So now we move to the ninth inning. The Angels lead by two. Here's Rysel Iglesias in for the save. He is a perfect 11 for 11 this season. And it's time to break that right here, starting with Bobby Bradley. He lines into the right field, and it has enough carry. Bradley goes deep for a second time in this episode. It's not a multi-home run game because his first one was in the Yankee game. But, hey, he still had two deniers today, his fifth of the year. Bradley is hitting for great power this season, but is struggling to keep a high average, which was pretty much his exact issue last year. That'll bring up Miles Straw now. The 3-1 pitch draws a walk. So the first batter of the inning has already scored. The second one is now on base. The tie-in run, this is an awfully good start to the inning, as that brings up Andres Jimenez, who had that bad strikeout in his last at-bat, looking to come up for his mistake. And instead, he grounds into a near double play. Luckily, Jimenez is safe at first. That was a close call, but the Angels still getting out there. That'll bring up Ahmed Rosario, who entered as a pinch hit earlier. This ball is hit high and deep in the left field. Go ball, go! This one is caught. Very anticlimactic there. I thought off the bat that was going to be a home run. It would put the Guardians ahead, but unfortunately, not going to happen. And this game comes down to the bat of Brian Lavistada, who has one career major league hit. Number two right now would be pretty nice, but instead he grounds it to third. Rendon flips it over to second. And the Angels get the win in a very exciting game. Five to four is your final. This one was really close from the start. And obviously it's always fun to see two of the best pitchers in baseball go head to head. But unfortunately, we were unable to get the victory today. And the Angels are going to win this series. It was a four-game set. And they ended up taking home three. The offense for us just wasn't great. Outside of Josh Naylor and Bobby Bradley, the rest of the team had two combined hits. Not ideal. I thought Shane Bieber was fine other than the home runs. The bullpen was fine other than the home runs. But long ball was kind of an issue for us as the Angels ended up going deep three times. And that's really what fueled their offense. The home runs are also what fueled our offense as we went deep three times as well. So the same issues that Bieber had pretty much plagued Otani. But their bullpen did not allow any home runs. That's why they ended up winning the game. So we're going to simulate the rest of April here. We're going to get through this series in Oakland against the Athletics. We actually got offered a trade during that span for the Rockies, and it's an interesting one. If you guys remember, a couple days ago, I uploaded a video, and it was 10 players you need to trade for, and it will be the show franchise. One of them was Sam Hilliard, who hits absolute dingers. The problem is the Rockies want Nick Sandlin. That's just not going to happen. So no deal. Maybe we'll inquire about Hilliard in the future, but Sandlin is not a player I'm willing to give up. So we would go 2-1 against the Oakland Athletics. Not too bad. And through one month, we are 15-14. and 14. We are over 500 through the first month of the year. I know we're only one game over 500, but hey, we'll take all the small victories we can throughout this season. So that'll end today's episode. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.